Hey guys, welcome to Mosaic Life. This is a completely different podcast than you're ever going to find. Um, for everyone who's just listening, it's going to be an every, like, you'll, you'll, you probably won't notice anything different. Um, but if you're watching, you might want to drop in some, uh, Jeremy, is that what it is? Jeremy? Jeremy? <laughs> yeah. Because I am handheld. you're going to go to live chat or something. In our live chat, <laughs> in you're going to drop down, some, down below. I was like, what is he talking about? Drums? <laughs> you're going to drop in some Dramamine. Dramamine. Uh, yeah, we got a Dramamine emoji now. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> we're sleeping on the, the episode. Did you finish the episode? No, we, they told us to take Dramamine. <laughs> and we are passed out. Um, but I am handheld. And so like, it is going to be wild camera work today. Because we're, I don't know if y'all can tell, we're in a car. I can already hear my dad. Daniel, that episode that y'all did, I can't even finish it. <laughs> like, okay. I'm puking my guts out, but I can't stop. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. I don't know, my dad sounds like South Park. <laughs> it slowly got there, didn't it? <laughs> so, we have, uh, actually, it's interesting. We haven't been together for the last few days. We've been, we've been mad at each other. And avoiding each other been and fighting, <laughs> fighting, been a bit of fighting. <laughs> That's what I think y'all <laughs> no, we're not fighting. Um, you, you went, you went camping with your fam. Yes. And I'm gonna make sure I don't hit stop recording while I adjust my camera. Um, no. How was that? It was amazing. Sort of. It, it was amazing, but we also got rained out a lot. Um, it did it storm amazing. this weekend. It did. They said, uh, of course, you go in Texas like five months without any rain. And then all of a sudden, it's like it all hits on the weekend that you decide to go camping. <laughs> so we were out there just camping away and a big old rain cloud came through and uh, flooded the whole area, it felt like. But we're alive. And I'm still mad at Sam. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I'm not mad at you. Right? I can never mad. be mad at you. I heard your son got sick violently ill <laughs> he uh he was puking his little heart out and so we've always taught our kids to do everything with your whole heart if boy, <laughs> he wholeheartedly went into he wholeheartedly was like dad i'm not gonna do it that way <laughs> ah! i'm putting my foot in this <gasps> uh, and so he projectile vomited a lot oh and then God. slept most of uh, the day which stinks because <laughs> in the camper he has a, a window right on his bunk, and so he's able to hang his head out like this little window and look at all the kids playing around and stuff. That's so, so sad. It was the makings of a very sad novel. <laughs> it was like The Fault in Our Campers. Oh, no, you can't say that because you've never seen The Fault in Our Stars. I never will. Yes, you will. We're going to watch it one night. I'll tell you, like, we're going to watch Expendables, <laughs> but we're actually going to watch. It's, dude, the movie takes off after this. Like, this is just the pre-story. Oh, this is a really slow start to this really great movie. <laughs> it's pretty slow, but it's good, dude. It's got Van Damme in it. <laughs> no, you, you could probably convince me of that. Anyway, the whole family, after that, I got sick. Ruth got sick. The other two haven't, so it's good. And I've avoided being around you guys so that I don't get sick until today. Can I adjust this on the fly? Oh no, no go the wrong way. way. Fly. fly. So yeah. And then now we're on our way. So this is a fun episode because I think we need to have an episode every once in a while that is kind of off the wall, get people out of their box because yeah, I love change. I love it when we shake things up and don't do the same process over and over. So change. I love things like this. <laughs> Anyway, I called Sam up, or actually texted him, but called him in millennial terms, and I was like, hey, I'm going to Tyler. What are you doing? And so anytime we're up for a trip to Tyler, my boy's in. <laughs> anytime that Daniel says, are you, I said, yes, I, I'm exactly. in. I'm in. It I, doesn't take me long. I get up out of my chair to go to the restroom. Sam's like, so what are we <laughs> Where doing? Where are we going? Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Sam, this is weird. Get out of the bathroom. But he's there for me. Every I'm there. Step. Every step. <laughs> He even flushes for me. I am so proud of you. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a service I provide. <laughs> so anyway, we're on our way to Tyler to actually run an errand for Ruth. I literally let's context here. I have no context. I don't know what we're <laughs> doing. What we're doing. I, for all I knew, I thought that like he still had to do like a gig out at Tyler for his job and do some kind of insurance stuff. Yep. But um, I was down to down to clown. So I'm actually taking Sam. Does to, Ruth know about this, Aaron? 
Uh, yes, she does. Oh. So it's not a surprise? It is not a surprise. It's actually a lie. I'm bringing Sam to a detention center. Oh, no. <laughs> That's the only way I can this get This is how they car. caught me. No! <laughs> yeah, we're we're going go. to do my taxes? No! Oh, please, no! <laughs> Sam, you got to do it, man. <laughs> so, yeah. That's uh, that's what we're doing. Sweet. And you wanted to do a pod just so that we can uh, have something on, on the books and talk about a little car episode? Well, that and I think it's good for our viewers that literally Sam and I haven't seen each other since... Thursday? Yeah. Yeah, Thursday. Yeah, it's been a bit. So y'all are able to see our first reactions to each other and <laughs> what we talk about when Sam and I don't see each other for almost a week and then we come back together. So we literally just started our conversation by yep. a bunch of bull crap, a lot of innuendos, a lot of stupid jokes. I was going to say, it's it's very, very similar to how we start Mosaic, but instead of like 20 minutes of baloney, it's usually like a few days of baloney yes. <laughs> for us to get back into like our serious mode. So this is interesting to see how it uh, jumps into... I'm I'm curious. I'm curious how this goes. I'm curious too. Because <laughs> I have a lot of jokes that I just want to throw out and stuff. But no, uh, I can give a life update. Um, give me a life update. So life update for everyone. And I'm pretty sure I'm allowed to say this I, legally. Um, I am now a road manager for Zach Mears. Yep. And uh, me and Zach go way back. Way, way back. How back? Way back. I was going to go into a song, but I don't think I can sing that song. Um, and 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 so it was, I just spent yesterday with him um, learning his show and, and learning all the tech and like how to call different shots, how to call, how to call the show essentially, because that's what he's wanted me to do is he wants me to kind of oversight it, which is wild because all my years at Gateway prepared me for this. Like when I was first working with Zach, um, we worked together and I was, I was cutting my teeth on production. Like I didn't, that, those were my first years of production. And so, uh, what year was that? that was back in oh, six or seven. No. Yeah. Pretty dang close. Cause I, how old was I when I moved to Texas? So I was trying to think. I was like you 17 were... or I was 18. Yes. Cause I got my GED yeah. in 2008. So it was like two, 2008, 2009. I was I came back. I worked at Pops Me Warehouse, or sorry, uh, Pops Game Warehouse. <laughs> this uh, spot where the the oh I can't say that word. Uh, <laughs> oh, doing terrible. Oh, this, this is a this is a fun one. Um, I just had to bleed out of my teeth. <laughs> Probably. Are you cussing the whole time? Why are y'all just so inappropriate in the car? Something about a car, you know, you just let it fly. It's all the horsepower. <laughs> it's all the horsepower for sure. Yeah, I was working at a warehouse, and then I ended up working at the actual store, and I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And then my buddy, Josh Alltop, shout out Josh Alltop. I don't think he watches any of this podcast. Oh, he's going to. <laughs> and um, uh, he, he hooked me up with a job where he's like, do, would you be interested in being a road manager for a magician? I said, it sounds magical. Uh, uh, let's do it. <laughs> and so uh, that's my favorite thing about working with magic is the puns <laughs> um, that I can say. And so, yeah, that's that's where I met Zach um, and we kind of worked together. And so 15 years later of production, I'm coming back to to, to doing it with them. Back, back, back again. Back. I thought you were going to continue. It's all I had on that one. Copyright. Yeah. And so we had a really good day. Um, I love just reconnecting with him and and talking about all the, the crazy stuff that has happened in our lives. And i um, very excited. His show's amazing. If you guys, uh, I'll, I'm sure I'll post a link to yeah. all his tour dates. If y'all are anywhere near any of these shows, please come out. Say hello. And... Just have a magical evening. Magical evening. <laughs> no, I'm excited. Uh, I think it's pretty neat, neato, that uh, you're saying like 15 years of basically God preparing you and yep. doing a bunch of other stuff. 
and a whole lot of other stuff that he's brought you through. And I don't know about Zach. Tell me a little bit about Zach's story. So Zach, Zach is, uh, he's been doing this he's for been, 15 years. He's been doing, he's pretty much, as far as I know, he's stayed in the magical world and, uh, you know, got his degree at Hogwarts and <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but I think slithery. I know. <laughs> Don't mistake it. Not that movie. <laughs> I will give you that. That's pretty one of the, one of the dumbest parts is the Slytherin uh, language. I, I know Slytherin house, but I don't know if that's the language. Well, they See. talk like with this. <laughs> no, they don't. Slither. It's it's a different it's a different language. Hey, I'm and they don't mirrors. speak English. No, they don't. No. Well, if you don't understand it, they don't. <laughs> Obviously. When I you understand. understand it, they have a lisp. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good question. So, like, if you understand that type of language from that certain place, I'm yeah. hoping say names. Yeah, yeah. I mean, does okay. The warts so, of hogs. We'll say this to all of our viewers: If you speak another language, do you hear that language in its language, or do you hear it in your own language? Meaning, if yeah. I hear Spanish. Do I translate it in my head, or do I just automatically assume agua is water? So mm. when I hear the word agua, do I think, oh, he means water, or do I just hear the word agua and I think, oh, water, or like, just think agua? Like they hear it in English? <laughs> exactly, because I've heard of people when they learn so. a second language. Listen, you move to another a country. A second language that makes sense. A second language, yes. But if you're born in the country, I don't think, I think the English word sounds weird to you. Right now, you and I think in English, right? Right. But 100%. when God speaks to you, what do you hear God as? English. English. What does a Spanish person hear God as? Spanish. Ooh. So is God Hispanic or English? That, it's like the way you hear things in your head. So Well, actually, God predates any of that. Ooh. And so he's not. Sorry, guys. God is not American. Oh, my gosh. Well, <laughs> I'm just making a point with language. Yeah, yeah. Good thing we have the God Squad here. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Whoa. Awesome. They pop up. Pop up the day, guys. That'd be hilarious. I don't know who that was. If that was matters, I... that was neither one of them sound like this. <laughs> it was a mix between uh, <laughs> Crusher like and a Muppets and... or something came out of the back seat. <laughs> oh man, follow your nose. Yeah, no, that's an interesting thought, and uh, yeah. I'll throw in another one. Okay, Slytherin. Um, because I'm curious about this. Okay. I'm also trying to be sensitive about this because I don't know. I don't want to be insensitive. Be both okay sensitively insensitive someone who was born blind do okay. they dream and do they dream in sight oh, in visuals 100 do they are you sure i am 100 percent positive they dream in in visuals though but in visuals i don't know or their perception of visual it's like explaining to someone who can't hear what a baby sounds like when it cries yes or see that's a hard one so yes, they dream. Yeah. But do they dream in pictures or stuff, or do they or just, just dream audio. in audio? Probably audio. Yeah. yeah that that one always one. like. And then I was like, okay, then someone who has an accident, who becomes blind, I bet they still dream in visuals. Ooh, that's interesting. And so like, can the only way that they see, is when they're sleepy, like Ooh. kind of thing. I'm just, this is the kind of stuff my brain will like latch on to. And I'm just like, oh, that's interesting to me. And uh, yeah, it has wow. nothing to do with what we're talking about. It has everything to do with what we're talking about. Because this magic show, you'll see a lot of things and mm -hmm. dream about it later. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I love, so here's the thing. I love magic because um, it just, it does something to another person like seeing something you cannot explain it's uh like i mean obviously like the term i can go for is magical but i want to use a different word it's just it's it's otherworldly like it's 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 uh plays with your senses it's yeah and it takes you back to like a childlike wonder and and that's what like really fascinates me and i'll purposely like try not to figure out like anyone who's like oh i i need to figure out how they did that you don't you don't want to know yeah. you really don't like because then you take away you're you're robbing the magic of it you're robbing the wonder and like it's the um uh jj abrams yes had uh his yeah, i think it was his great grandfather was a magician and he left him his magic trunk 
that had like all his stuff in it. And uh, J.J. Abrams had never opened his grandfather's magic trunk. And so like to this day has never opened it. And he thinks about <laughs> there's like five million dollars in it. <laughs> Why didn't I open it? I'm sorry, JJ. I was that just making a, a very terrible joke. But that's how that's how he like gets his inspiration. That's how he came up with Lost. Was he's Ooh, like, what's yeah. in the trunk? Like, and the entire that's universe the of of Lost can be in the box. Like, yeah. Which is why it just. We won't spoil Lost here for anyone who's watching. Oh, we'll spoil it. <laughs> Kai is not going to watch it. So my daughter, I think we talked about this on another pod. She was uh, watching it. Yeah. So she actually is watching the show and loving every minute of it. And then my youngest son actually explained something to my other son last night when we watched an episode. He was like, no, but remember when, uh, what's your name, did this to that? And I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that now. Thank you, AJ. <laughs> no, it's such a brilliant show. I agree with you on the side of, like, uh, some kind of magic trick or something like that that captures your imagination. I don't really want to know how they do it either. Yeah. Because uh, it does play with my imagination. I honestly, there's this uh, dude that's on, well, he has a bunch of videos, like, on Facebook, TikTok, things like that. And um, he, it's the something effect. Is it the Mandela effect or something? Yep. Yep. And he does these videos where you have no clue how he did what he did. And it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And every time I watch it, he has it as like a comedy. So it makes people laugh. So I, I like that. that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, uh, it takes you back. It takes you back to being a kid. And that's, I don't think that's a bad thing. And a lot of people have a hard time with it. Um, like people, I'm pretty sure they thought that I fell off and started worshiping Satan when they heard that I was working for a magic show. But I'm not. I love Jesus. And guess what? The magician I work for loves Jesus. And we do a lot of shows in churches. So if you're a church and you want to hire a magic show, uh, send us a message. <laughs> Little pun. Or not pun. Uh, what's it called? I don't know. My brain stopped working. <laughs> He's doing this was... because we hit the lake. Get ready to take a deep breath. As soon as the bridge starts on three. One, two, three. <laughs> Do you know how many oh. years how many years we have done that? <laughs> and you shouldn't drive into that the same time. That was a long time. Oh man. <clears throat> this is uh yeah, that's 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 the <coughs> it made me call. A peek behind the curtain <laughs> of our trips to Tyler what we usually oh, did. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Alright, I'm good. You think I have to like auto correct things? Or something? Say, you feeling lightheaded? <laughs> no, I'm feeling good. I was just my lungs like were going. Stop! <laughs> are we getting food? Uh, are you hungry? I could eat. Then let's get some food. I can eat. Yeah, I don't know if our burger place is open, but we can we can give it a whirl. And Sam and I went to this on three, one, two, three. <gasps> Do it. Sam, keep going. Keep going, Sam. Carry us home, Sam. You can do it. Five, four, three, two, one. Now. 
I, I'm so proud I of can't you. believe you didn't make it. I got scared. I don't know what I did. You always make it. I'm sorry. I I'm ashamed like now. I felt the team. You should. You should Gosh. feel like it. Thank you, I should. <laughs> we do shame showers here, so. Start taking uh, breathing exercises everywhere I go. I, how often, you don't drive enough to Tyler, that's the problem. <laughs> that, that's, that's the issue here. What's interesting is that the, we started this episode on the north side of Palestine, right? Yeah. And so, not many people know this, but I went to college over here for two years, and I had to drive this road every day. So, as long as we've been potting so far is when I would hit the North Loop. And they didn't have um, cars in that day. We had to <laughs> walk <laughs> or ride our bikes. I was going to say online classes back then. <laughs> yeah. So, you had to actually physically go. What's interesting is that so online classes is relatively new because when I was in college, I was like so freaking old. Back when I did online registration. <laughs> no, we all my stuff was actual still paper junk. I had to go turn in paper apps and do all that stuff. All my scholarships and stuff had to be on paper, transcripts, paper. And so all that stuff I had to bring over here manually. That's and crazy. Then, on top of that, the whole internet slash online courses was just starting to kind of become a thing. And so they had like one history class or something like that online. And then the class was like even harder than the regular class because they're like, if we're going to be an online class, we're going to like make people suffer <laughs> because they, you know, I don't know if talk like that, maybe the instructor, but they're trying to prove a point, I guess, that you can't just like skip out and take something the lazy way. Yeah. Anyway, and now it's like you can get your entire degree from home. Which is what I'm doing. You are. And that's actually a really nice thing because I get to travel and yes. I get to just, I'm going to save up and get a laptop so that I can still do my schoolwork while I travel. Yes. But that's my next uh, goal. If I'm placing a goal, because someone I know likes planning. And not so, um, no, not you, definitely not, not you. Me. And so that's my next planned goal is I need to get a laptop now. We were actually on this stretch of road when we were deciding, well, you were deciding, when I'm all involved in your future. <laughs> That's true. We made a trip to get a burger. Yes. And um, that was the trip that we ended up talking about. If I could go back in time and tell my younger self what to do for school, I would tell him to go get uh, his degree in psychology. Mm -hmm. And then you challenged me. To not mess with the sacred timeline. Yes. I yeah. Could. Yeah. To never, never try anything in my life ever. And, uh, and that just solidified my future. No, you said, let's go see what it takes to, um, to actually do it. Just making sure I was, that's why, uh, um, and that led to, led to, led to me being a student. I'm a student. You are a student. We're, we'll, we still need to, uh, start that fraternity. Oh yeah, what was it? S and D. Uh, it was Phi. <laughs> Delta knows the D. Yeah. It was uh, the C. Uh, I mean the S. A sigma. Oh, Sigma Phi Delta. Yeah. Yep. Sigma Phi. Sigma Phi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sam and I uh, created a fraternity. Because I need a full college experience. Yep. That's or, what Daniel's decided. That's exactly what I've decided. I'm taking him to a college party right now. <laughs> that's the, that's that's the surprise. That's the surprise. <laughs> yeah, we're really not doing errands. We're just uh, riding to a party. It's the mathletes. <laughs> that's, uh, I'm joining that. I, I assume that's what they do at college. Yeah, they do. I've heard about mathletes. I never, I never liked math enough to actually know it was a real place when... It's actually a, a silent disco we're going to right now. I love silent discos. You're insane. How do you not? Because it takes out the whole sound. What are you talking about? All right, so... Wait, do you know how silent discos work? Yes. <laughs> okay. If you were to create, like, the perfect human or whatever... Yeah. Like, the perfect human 
sometimes people are like it has to be person is all symmetrical everything is pristine everything like that but what makes us human is that we have those slight imperfections mm -hmm. like maybe one eye is just differently proportioned or like your ear is you know the size of an elephant or something that changes the person which makes them quote unquote perfect because you're unique yeah right? well same thing with silent discos all right so if you go okay. to this thing yep. and you have pristine song inside your earphones yep. it's not the same as listening to like oh what was that part of the lyric or muffled sounds when you go to different parts of the room or the reverberation <laughs> of the music off the walls it's the whole experience of having the music in the room rather than having perfect music in your headphones but here's where the the flaw is Okay. Usually at silent discos, there's channels. And so not everyone's listening to the same song you are. <laughs> I didn't know that. And so, like, that's where the uniqueness comes out of it. Because you're dancing, you could be dancing to a completely different song. <laughs> so funny. So what and if somebody's off? That, that's, a, that's a part of it. Oh, my And gosh, the other that. joy is for people who don't have the headphones on, just watching these people in complete yes. silence. Yes. Dance and be like, Whoa! Awkward. So stinking awkward. <laughs> I love it. So I could be jamming out to like Lord of the Rings soundtrack or something <laughs> like that. Usually they have like at least three or four DJs that are choosing songs. So uh, you don't get to choose your I thought you choose your own playlist. No. I was no. like, I would definitely not... Yeah, <laughs> listen to some music. Yeah, my first experience with the silent disco was at Bonnaroo. They had one there, and it was really, really That's interesting. So funny. So, do they like hand out headphones or use your yep. own? No, they ha they have headphones for you. That's. That's very see now you now you have a little bit of context to why silent yeah. discos are actually pretty awesome. I would never go to one, but now. <laughs> I stand correct. It's funny you say that. We're on our way to a summer disco right now. Oh, I, yeah. I uh, goofy movied you, and I put in the destination. Oh to the... no! <laughs> I've been following the wrong destination. We're gonna go to a Powerline concert instead. There's plenty of Powerlines. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Powerline was the rock star in a Goofy movie. Oh yes. <laughs> exactly. That song lives rent free inside my head. It's the best song. It's so wild. And then what, it that chick comes on at the song with them and sings like this duet. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. that's a really good song. That movie is one of my favorite movies. It's probably the goofiest movie I've ever seen. Probably. <laughs> Oh, so, all this to bring it back to, I am flabbergasted that God does the things he does and brings you all the way back to this person that you worked with so many yep. years ago to do kingdom things. Yep. And uh, you just had to go on a little bit different journey. It's uh, when, when I was with Tim and Hector, we would always say, God doesn't waste a thing. And that is 100% what this is. This is a season that I thought was gone that he has brought back because he doesn't waste anything. And there's so many, uh, there's so many aspects of just my work life that have formed me to be able to do this job as confidently as I feel today. Like I learned it all yesterday and I was like, this is going to be great because I get to one me and Zach, our vibe was like, we picked up right where we left off. And uh, and so like, it was just a joy to be around him. It was really interesting because he, uh, he uh, what's the word? He rents a, uh, like a rehearsal space. Yeah. And it's this company in uh, North Richmond Hills who took a prison and turned it into like a creative studio space. So all the cells are now like studio spaces that you can rent out. That's cool. And it did. We walked through. He gave me like a tour. And I'm like, this is one of the most genius ideas yeah. I've seen in a very long time. And it's really cool. And like the people who own it, they love God. They are believers. And that's why Zach wanted to rent from them because he got in when they were just opening yeah. um, and got a really good deal. And so like, it's a super cool space that he gets to just play around and, practice stuff with um and i got to see that space yesterday and it was really awesome and so just like being a part of it all over again 
feels good, man. Yeah. I think that's so cool. The <clears throat> I was thinking as you were saying that, I'm thinking like prophetically, that's really cool because a prison where it's like probably not probably it is probably not probably it is the worst <laughs> i keep going back and forth because i'm like well maybe some good things come out of that but yeah. how god can use a prison cell to bring life out of yeah and actually bring positive things out of I think and creativity amazing. and creativity he doesn't like that is so true even for y'all that are listening like god <clears throat> doesn't waste anything yeah. one of the the biggest void you could say in my life yeah or times where i thought that like there's no way that anything positive is going to come or no kind of life like going through all the stuff from covid is what i'm thinking yeah and that whole segment that the whole world went through and i'm thinking about all the times that i woke up uh went into work i remember several times just being in tears driving up to the hospital being like i am dreading this because of um just the hard stuff that i was doing yeah and i remember leaving that and then stepping into the career i'm in now and just still asking god like why yeah why did i have to experience the things i experienced and it seems to me like there was no purpose in it. Hmm. Like there, there was no reason for me to go to level two a, I should have just gone from level two to three. Yeah. And God is using now that I'm seeing just even through mosaic life, the things that we bring out inside the episodes. Yeah. Um, it probably wouldn't have meant so much to y'all listening. If Sam and I wouldn't have gone through the things we've been through. Hmm. Like if you hadn't been to hell and back, yeah. you can't tell people, out there hey there's still hope even though you feel like you're in the middle of hell right now there's actually hope yeah um in the place that you're in and i think that's interesting because god after that bring it back again like after 15 years 16 years that you've been doing this whole thing like you're meeting up with this guy and picking up right where you went off and god was like good i had to get some training in you real quick so you can step into the season that you're stepping into yeah Anyway. No, you're absolutely right, dude. And it's like to everyone who is in a season or like feels the dynamic of that might be true on some things, but I don't think it's true about this. And like there's something that comes up in your mind that you're like, I don't see this ever. You just don't see it yet. There's going to be that moment where you'll you'll meet someone because i am a strong especially in crappy seasons i'm a strong believer you go through really hard seasons so that you can reach back and pull others through yeah later on in life and until they show up you don't you just think that you went through a hard season yeah and and so when when it happens and like someone shares a story and you're like i know exactly what you're going through then you realize that's why I went through this. Yeah. It was so that I can speak life into this person who's probably going to call it quit soon. Yeah. If they don't get some kind of encouragement. And, and that is, I try to th like think of things like just the financial situation that I've had the last six months, dude has been insane. Mm. And like, it's been a toll on my parents. It's been a toll on, on me. Like I felt like this heavy, unliftable burden and now like things are starting to turn around and I'm like, I can now be a, be a blessing to my parents mm. and be able to give back to all the times that they've helped me out and just relieve them from having to carry me as heavy as they, as I was, I'm a little bit lighter now. Like it's, it's, it's still like, I'm still coming out of it, but also like there's now I see future. Now I see hope. Now I see like, the story that was already unfolding that I didn't see before. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, I just think that that's super encouraging to anyone who's going through it and they feel like, cause dude, months ago I was in that place. I didn't feel so like nothing good's coming out of this. Yeah. Like maybe I get my degree, but that's a four year journey. Yeah. So it's going to be four years of hell, not knowing and this, okay, I think I can share this. Um, also, Ken, I don't know if we can go to the Capital One Bank at some point. 
Or Target? We can go to Target. Is it? Capital One's right next to Target. Yeah. Okay, then we'll, yeah, we'll go there. Okay. I just didn't know if we were headed to a specific part of Tyler that was going to be away from it, and I didn't want to be this close the to it. we're going to is straight up the scariest part you would ever be in. Is it like a road that you would think you could ride a skateboard down? It's... <laughs> Where's that beat button? <laughs> we don't have it here. You got to go raw. <laughs> oh, Sammy. <laughs> Such a nerd. Okay, so back on track. Let me let me get like I th- I think I can share this. Um, so literally, me working with Zach. It it came out of one moment, and it was a night that I was I was giving up, like I was just in a in a place where I didn't see anything happening that was good. And I was on Facebook and I was like, I'm just going to do something completely different than I've been doing. And uh, Zach had posted a picture of it was uh, it's either his tour dates or something like that. It was about a show. And I was like, man, I wonder if he's looking for a road manager. And I typed out this text message that was like, hey, dude, I know we haven't talked in like a long time. And, like, this is completely random, completely out of the blue. Mm-hmm. But is there any way that you're possibly needing a road manager? Like a Hail Mary. Yes, dude. It, that's exactly what it was. It was a Hail Mary for me. And I was like, if not, don't worry about it. I know this is completely random. And I sat there at least four times that I can recall n- going to not send the text. Mm-hmm. Like, almost deleting it. And just rereading it, going like, should I send this? Should I not send it? And I was going back and forth. Finally, I just hit send. And he immediately called me and was like, dude, like, I've been interviewing six different people this week for a road manager position. But because of our history, he was like, willing to give me the opportunity. And that just... That's insane. It's it really is like because I remember how close I was to not sending that text message. Yeah. And had I not sent that text message, I wouldn't I wouldn't be in the position I am. Yeah. Like and so it's just you don't know what you don't know until you try, I think. Like and it was It was humbling for me. Like I had to, I had to ask for that. Like he didn't hit me up saying like, Hey, I know you've done this before. In fact, in his head, I was not an option because we just make assumptions of things like in our head. We're like, Oh, they're doing fine. They're well off. Like they're, he didn't know my situation. Yeah. And so like, and then I'm, I'm there with him learning the show yesterday. And he's like, dude, I can't, I couldn't believe when I saw your name show up on my phone. And I'm like, this is, wild to me because it's just God like to bring me to a place that I I I hit that level of desperation where I was like I gotta make something happen because nothing's happening right now and and it kind of like it uh, that's the let's if I can wrestle with something wrestle it's the Am I doing something in my own strength, in my own will, trying to make it happen? Or did God have to break down all my situations to get me to that place where I was willing to at least send that text message? You know? Yeah. Because it's like... Or is it both? Or is it both? Is it doubt? Like, because I remember right before I sent that text message going, God, you're not going to show up. So I have to do something. Yeah. And so, like, that's... I don't know. That's something that I'm I'm wrestling with it. It's like the the mind of a man plans his ways and the Lord directs his steps. Yeah. Like we've said that over and over. <clears throat> and God was getting you to a place because he's so genuine and he's so good that he gets you to a place where you maybe don't have any other alternative. And so you have to do that. Yeah. And maybe that's where he wanted you to get to was that place there. Yeah. I was thinking when you're telling me this whole thing right there, I was thinking of... Joseph and how his brothers put him in the worst possible yep. situation. And if you think about it, it was against his will. 
it was the community around him. His own brothers did this to him, which kind of speaks to your situation, like the season you've been in of like people that are in the family of God did this, you know, this yeah. whole thing. And like you've been in this place now of like, okay, God, I'm trying to get out of this uh, season I'm in, whatever prison it is. And just like Joseph, God had him in a specific place to be trained to do the job that he was supposed to do. And then even when he was trying to get out on his uh, own accord out of slavery, he's working as a slave in somebody's house. And then it just gets even worse for him. And then God eventually makes him the second in command of all of Egypt. And you're like, that's a story that nobody can like say that it wasn't God. Yeah. Except we get into these situations where we're so close, where we're in the prison and we've been waiting forever. How long was Joseph in prison? Like seven years? Something like that, yeah. It was a long time. I may be getting the years mixed up. But Joseph was in prison a long time. And I feel like people, and it may be for our mosaic, um, our shard nation, when yes. our shard nation gets to a place of your six years and 11 months in, and God is like, listen, one more month, and yeah. I'm about to just release this entire thing that you have no clue that's about to happen, but people are just giving up hope at the very last moment. Yeah. So I just want to give encouragement to people listening that like your your month is coming where Pharaoh is going to call you into his court and say, mm. hey, I don't understand something. And I know that you have a gifting in this area. And I know that you can hear God and I need help in this. Yeah. Like that, that time is coming and don't give up hope. Don't be disheartened that that it hasn't come yet. Yeah. And don't give up hope that you can't find Capital One. <laughs> it's it's a little bit further down. Okay. It's past uh, Taco Bell and stuff like that. Yeah. So anyway, I guess the whole thing on it is that it's so funny that it happens at the last moment because like what you were just saying, I was at the end of myself. Mm-hmm. You're saying key words like where your will is finally broken. Yeah. Where God is like, now I can mold it. Now I can work with it. And I feel like people are at that place and my encouragement would be don't give up hope, but at the same time, just let yourself break in yeah. a safe place. Yep. And I think that's a hard thing to say nowadays when the the verbiage that everybody is saying to you is stay uh, strong, stay yeah. strong, fight, yeah. uh, push against it, uh, pull yourself up. Like you can do this. And then especially a lot of those moms or even single dads out there that are like feeling they're at the end of themselves and they're like, well, just, just push on ahead or why don't you just break in mm-hmm. God's hands? Like he's yep. a safe place. Do you want to go inside? No, just the ATM's fine. He's a safe place for you to break and let him put you back together. Yeah. You can if you want me to zoom into this uh keypad, <laughs> we can give everybody if you log in now. If you want to keep talking, I can get out and do this. Well, this is just awkward. I'm gonna talk to the camera. Oh, if you're not okay. Oh, you were on a thing though. I'm getting a close-up of my nose. (laughs) I'm not going to show you guys my bank information. (laughs) Hold, please, guys, while we figure some stuff out. Options go... Oh, just a moment. You want to mash the pot? No, just... I'll just mute that. That's just... Please, that place, make sure you remember that number. (laughs) I mean, too, bleep that up. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Hey, welcome back to Mosaic, and everybody, I just got my stuff. You're going to deposit cash. Because I got money. Get your cash ready. It's ready. I'm ready. There you go. There's a picture of Spongebob. Back left is Spongebob. Oh, I'm not ready. Do the whole stack. <laughs> and that's me. Audrey's not ready. You lied to it. And there is one thing that I want. I know exactly where it is in Target. If we can go to Target. Absolutely. The Hulk. 302. We're good. Um. Ooh, my hand was shaking at one point. <laughs> I was like, oh no. <laughs> Uh, even giving they rejected a, it. He's giving you a tip. <laughs> they said thanks. They did not like Mr. Lincoln. 
Usually they'll do that. That's one bill that just doesn't go through. It's because it would blew up the wall. We're securing your cash deposit. Oh, I do need to make sure that I transfer this right away. Dude, he paid me for the whole month. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Thanks for stopping by. Let's talk about that for a minute. Hold on. Uh oh. I'm just going to make sure I transfer this right now. Um, because I'll forget, and then I need to hold that camera up before we leave. <laughs> Let's talk about machines. Machines. The machine knows, Dwight. Machines that say "Have a nice day." Yep, irk me. Why? Because the machine doesn't know, and it doesn't want you to have a nice day. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, Zach brought up a very interesting thing today. He said, "It's funny how we have computers that have us tell them that we're not computers." <laughs> Ooh. Okay, we're good. Has Zach ever? Broken his leg or arm or any part of it. Which Zach? Where's? Uh, not that I know of. Probably. I don't know. I encourage him not to. Why? Because if he breaks a bone, will not be technically breaking a mirror. <laughs> be seven years bad luck. And if he wants a whole lot of bad luck, <laughs> I'm just saying you may want to uh, take care of yourself, Zach. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one to look out for, Zach. <laughs> so careful out there, bud. Careful. When they say break a leg, they don't mean it literally. Bro, do not do that. <laughs> do not break I a leg. I would highly encourage, I would advise you not to break your leg. You know, that's the wildest statement that we say to people. Like, the, the origin of that story was <laughs> a actor who went on to do a stage performance and literally broke their leg in a scene and they just went and st stayed in character. And now we tell people, hey, go out there and break a leg. <laughs> like, that's so wild. <laughs> I want to keep up with the tradition. Hey, go out there and fail. <laughs> do it. Go do it. Injure yourself so that you you act better. <laughs> that's what we're telling people. To Cause do. yourself extreme amount of pain. Do you like sushi? I love sushi. Sam uh, had a little moment of doubt there because sometimes I'll say I absolutely love something <laughs> just to jack with them when I really don't like it at all. So you always keep them guessing. I can pretty much, they might not be able to tell. I can tell whenever you legitimately mean it and when you're just like bull spitting. All right, let me try somebody. I love going into sporting goods stores. Yeah. I love... Going to Taylor Swift concerts. That's fake. One. I love. I love. Can you visit? I love sushi. That's a real one. Yep. <laughs> See? So if you're just now getting to know me, and I'd be like, "Oh, I love doing that," just call Sam and be like, "All right, is he serious?" <laughs> or if I'd be like, "Hey, hey I love you, dude." Like, uh, that's fine. okay. <laughs> Well, we're kind of at 50 minutes here, and my arm is killing me. <laughs> so I think we're, we're in a good place to end the episode. It's a different episode. Um, if you guys do like this content, let us know because we'll make more of it. Yeah. We're always That's in the car. Idea. And so, like, please, like, give us some <laughs> feedback. We can jump in a car. <laughs> That's easy. Um, it's time to go pot again. All right. All right let's let's fill up the tank. Our first teasers, we used to jump in the cars and do our little teasers. Oh, yeah. Remember when we were teasing for Mosaic? Mosaic. <laughs> when we're teasing Mosaic. Um, but guys, thanks for hanging out. Uh, and until the next episode. <laughs>